I am often asked by companies, well, how do I get one of those Thea awards? Well, thank you for asking, Cheryl. <laughs> so what we're going to be doing for our this last presentation is talk about why you get a Thea award, how you get one, and what you need to do. And to do that, I've called upon some amazing people to help me out on this. Now, we are celebrating for the last, yesterday, today, and tomorrow, the uh, Thea Award recipients for 2015. Craig Hanna was the chairman of the committee for this last year. I have the privilege of being the chairman for the Thea committee for this coming year. We have a very large committee, plus we have several subcommittees. Now, we meet starting at the about the third week in August, we'll be meeting for seven to eight weeks. And if anyone on any of those committees have a nomination that has come in, then they cannot be in the room while we're make, having our discussions. This last year, just so that you know, we had 169 nominations. And we needed out of the 169 to whittle it down to 14 of the AOAs of which you witnessed today with the exception of Disney, and you'll see that. If not, go to the park. It's an absolutely outstanding parade, parade spectacular. That's 14 nomination, or 14 AOAs plus one classic award, which see, see San Diego Zoo and got yesterday. We had the conversation about that, and that's an amazing place. Plus Keith James with the award for the Lifetime Award recipient. Now, allow me to introduce the panel for the rest of the day, and you're going to be able to ask them any questions that you want. They will most likely be able to answer those questions. But I must tell you again, just remind you, is that anybody who has a nomination in play cannot be in the room at the same time as the discussion. So please welcome somebody who could not be in the room when his project was being discussed, Phil Hedema. Come on up, Phil. Someone who's going to be the chairman of the Thea Award Committee in 2017, Adam Bizark. We also have a phenomenal woman, Lisa Pasamante, who often heads up the museum subcommittee. Come on up, Lisa. And do we have enough chairs? There we are. And a gentleman that I know I just love from France, please welcome Lifetime Award recipient who is always on this committee, Yves Papin. So just a couple of quick notes before we, um, we kind of share some thoughts about this, uh, because we all get asked this question all the time, you know, What's the decision based on? How do I submit an award? How do I have a better chance to, to make a better nomination? Um, and so we'd really like to be able to help clarify that if there are any questions. Um, just some quick background. The Thea Committee is made up of all of the lifetime, member, lifetime uh, Buzz Price winners who choose to participate. We usually have eight or nine participating in any season. And then there are nine members at large that are elected um, for fixed terms um, who are yeah, um, really large. And and then there are um, there's a liaison with the board of directors, and the, who is usually the immediate past president of the TEA. And then there are a number of subcommittees, and there are no structures to which those subcommittees. We're trying every year to make those bigger and bigger to get the maximum number of uh, nominees in, and also the maximum amount of evaluation across a broad spectrum. The committee tries to go and visit any project that's nominated, but because there is no budget for our committee, um, we rely on, most, mo most of us on the committee travel a lot. So we try and make detours and see, so we see a pretty good percentage of all the awards, but it, all the more reason it's important to submit a nomination that really describes your project well, um, so that if for some reason no one, none of us or none of the subcommittees can get out there, and that's really rare, but we still want to understand the project. Um, um, 
well, why are the awards different than Oscars, Adam? Why don't you tell us that? <laughs> oh, okay. Um, so, so people people ask us about this all the time, and sometimes there's a lot of confusion and misunderstandings, and sometimes even like hurt feelings or about why didn't I get an award and, and why didn't anybody notice my award? And and Eve just quit the the committee apparently <laughs> so that's how, in a fit of rage. The um, uh, <laughs> okay. The um, uh, the awards were created 20 years ago, right, by Bob Rogers, who at the, who had recently gone through a painful and traumatic experience. He had created a couple of movies that were nominated for Oscar shorts, and he said there is nothing more amazing and exciting than being nominated for an Oscar, and there's nothing more horrible than losing and having the guy who's sitting next to you who got who won step on your feet as he steps out to the aisle to go up and collect his Oscar and you're sitting at the party afterwards sitting all glum because you lost and he was trying to find a way to celebrate excellence without having losers just to find and celebrate excellence in and of itself so the process that he sort of set out was one in which our whole industry is encouraged to sort of push forward projects that are great and it gets kind of combed through by this committee, and we just look for awesome stuff without ever singling out the people who don't get chosen. And it's, it's a little hard to wrap your head around because it's all announced in advance, and, it's, and it, it, it works for a very good reason. But just, just to emphasize, the number one goal of the committee always, always is to find excellence and recognize it. Right. So we're looking at... And, and the rest of the roles are all in service of that. And, and for many reasons, the rest of the roles are very flexible. There are no fixed categories. So you don't have to enter to be in the attraction dark ride category or the aquarium category. We try and look across a broad spectrum. But if a project comes in that doesn't fit any category, the committee has the full ability to say, we'll create a new category for that. If it's an excellent project and there's no criteria about size of the project, big project, small project. And in fact, we've tried to adjust the rules the committee has over the years to make sure that small budget projects across a, a wide spectrum of small budgets get equal consideration with big projects. And those were rules that were submitted and, and changed the last couple of years. So the, anybody can submit a nomination for an award. You don't have to be a TEA member. Award nominations can come from anywhere. Any kind of project can be nominated, and there is no categories, and there's actually no fixed number of awards that the organization is obligated to give. If there are really 15 or 16 excellent, excellent projects that you know, ra raise themselves above the bar of excellence relative to everything else, the committee can give out that many. If there aren't that many, they can give out 10. We try and recognize, I think, as many as possible every year. The truth is that the, the number of awards is really limited by the length of the show and the, and the conference, right? That the show, the award show would be 18 hours long if we awarded all the things that we thought were excellent. So it's really hard to whittle it down. I, I don't think that's the so major anything. factor, though. As the, as, the, as the producer of the show, and I'm committed that we always get out by 10 o'clock, but nonetheless, but if really, we gave you 20 awards, would you get us out by 10 o'clock? Sure, okay, cool. Sure, We're doing that this absolutely. year. All right. You heard that. 20, yeah. year, 20 awards next year. <laughs> I, I want to go back and emphasize, too, that anyone can submit a nomination. Meaning, if you saw it and you loved it, you know, Kyle could have submitted the, <laughs> the Pui de Fu. Did you love that, Kyle? Right. I was going to say, that could yeah. have been his submission. So you don't have to be involved with the project. And I think often there's a lot of misunderstanding about that. And so often the nominations come from the project team, but they don't have to. So the members at large are really in control of helping us to see excellent projects a, a and good, review them. A good example was the Albert, uh, was the... Uh, VMA. The, the, the Victoria and Albert uh, okay. show that won, that won this year. It, they didn't know about us. They didn't submit an award. The committee found that show saw and realized how amazing it was and pushed it forward on our own. So sometimes we don't even get nominations, but it helps. The, the only criteria is that the, the, the owner of the project has to be willing to send a representative to accept the award. That is a criteria that, yeah. for eligibility. Yes, what, what, what and submit a – that's right. There's two, there's two requirements on the owner. The award goes to the owner, not to the people who worked on the show, right? It's, a, it's an award for the 
owner of the attraction, and their requirement is they have to three. I think they have three requirements. They have to come here to accept the award and and receive it. They, we don't just mail it to them because we want to meet them and celebrate them. They have to submit a list of credits of who did work on the show so that that's how all of our vendors and comrades get acknowledgement. And um, the third one is... The, right. And, and, and as of study. today, they have to do a case study <laughs> and they can't chicken out because their lawyers tell them they can't. That's it. <laughs> they can't. That's right. Because they the case studies are awesome, right? They're they, part, of the, part of the thing. And they don't have to speak English. And they don't have to... <laughs> Um, yes, <laughs> this is important uh, to say that the uh, the awards are not uh, just the TEA award. Right. This is the, the profession and all this area of activity award. So that means it's not only for the TEA members, of course, uh, and uh, big work, and especially out of America, uh, a very big uh, help from all the people from TEA is to find, to scout, and to find the good project, the excellence of the project, and to invite these people, this owner, actually, to submit a project uh, for uh, receive, to, to, re uh, to receive an award. So it is a very good way to develop TEA, I mean the association itself, uh, but also it is important for um, all the people working in this area to have the support of these awards here and there. And I'm speaking uh, about Europe, but it is true, of course, in, uh, uh, in Asia or in Middle East or in other countries. So um, that's why to say that even we are very happy to be together, we know each other because we, uh, we, we meet often and so and so, but this association and the award is really made to be open to other people, to excellency from anywhere and, uh, in, 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 and in any category and any place that these uh, shows or these events or these uh, attractions are settled. Yeah. No, in fact, it's very exciting for us when we find something from outside our usual industry because then we get to... Uh, reach out to them. Sometimes they don't even know the TEA exists. They're excited that they get an award and then they start to become a member of our community and we exactly. make exactly. new friends and contacts. This is what happened with Puy Fou, actually. They didn't know we existed? Uh, I mean, a few years ago, they didn't know the, the association was existing. They didn't know they were excellent. So that <laughs> but I, I think the circle of the TEA has grown tremendously because of that practice in the awards and the awards have become... I, I, I think recognizes as a real significant honor. I want to talk a little bit about the subcommittees because we try, the committee, I think, you know, I, I want to be clear also, we're not speaking officially here today. We're kind of pinch hitting. Um, we're we're just are the plan B, B yeah, team, we, so we're not. We're but, really well prepared. Um, and, and I'm not, none of us are permanent members of the committee. Eve is, we'll all term off. I term off after this next year. Um, uh, but the commit, the subcommittees, we try, and the committee has tried over the years to really diversify that, both geographically, so we're getting representation of projects um, and connection to projects through Europe, through Asia, um, through any part of the world. And, and I would encourage anybody that wants to serve on one of those subcommittees to let someone know, because we're always trying to make those committees even more um, deep and rich to really seek out the best projects out there. There's also a museum subcommittee. There's usually an entertainment subcommittee. And I think plus, yeah, a live show and spectacle. Um, so, and, and we can go pretty broad throughout the membership. To, and, and one of the reasons for doing that is also to just spread our arms as far as possible to make sure that the nominees are coming in. I think just in interest of time, because we don't want to go over because the cocktail bar is going to be open. Um, we should talk a little bit about what it takes to nominate a project. Um, oh, yeah. And I, I'd have to say one of the most important things any project that's nominated can do is create a compelling video that describes the experience of the attraction. And if you were paying attention today, you saw a lot of very, very good ones on the screen here. Imagine what it 
if you were showing this attraction to a group of people who had never seen it before, what would it take to communicate to them what makes this attraction unique? What is the scope of the attraction? Sort of how does it work, you know, operationally? That doesn't mean we, the video has to show all the details. You can submit all of that stuff in writing too, but what is the essence of the attraction? Um, and the rules of the nominating committee, and, and by the way, all of this is on the website. You can, you can follow all of this, and I think there's a handy cheat sheet like right outside you can pick up as well. Um, we, I think we ask you to submit a short video and everybody to submit a short one of, of a predetermined length so that there's consistency. But you can also submit as much additional material as you want because often as we're deliberate, as the committee is deliberating, they'll look at three or four attractions and, and say, I want to understand more about that one. Um, why is that one different than these other three? And then we'll go, the committee can go in and look at the su supplemental material. And often in media-based shows, it's really hard to judge a show without being able to see all of the media that was created for that, you know, a, a ride film or, or um, uh, story-based yeah. show. So the committee does spend hours reviewing materials. And uh, the committee has gotten much more sophisticated over the last three, four years. And all of the submitted materials are available by um, secure website to all of the members of the committee to be able to go in on their own time so we're not spending <laughs> thousands of hours in group committee meetings but so that we come to the meetings having reviewed the materials as thoroughly as we possibly can and then are able to discuss them yeah and, and, the, and like Phil said the, the, those videos are sometimes really all we have if we haven't been there then that's the only way you can communicate what you're project is like and and there's kind of two things one is just show us the project just it just as best you can let us experience the whole <coughs> thing stick a camera on the ride vehicle or at the back of the house and just shoot the, the whole show as that additional supplemental piece just to, so you can see it as much as you possible from the perspective of, of an audience member but then also some folks will put together a more emotional edit of the video and that might seem like cheating, but it's not. What you're trying to do is to convey the emotions that you intend for the attraction to convey. You can you can kind of code into the video that you cut to try and emphasize what it is you want the audience to feel. That can be very effective. What we're not interested in seeing, or what the committee is not interested in seeing, uh, is opening day footage. Oh yeah, of the crowds at opening day and the ribbon cutting. Um, we don't mind seeing that, but it doesn't tell much about the attraction. We're also not no, really no time lapse photography of the eighteen months it took to build the thing. We've seen uh, that one about. And we're not we're not really interested in the boy that was terrific of the person getting off the ride or the owner's daughter saying how great the attraction is because um, yeah. we want to understand the essence of the attraction itself, um, and that's what that's what we're and, really looking for. And the TV commercial doesn't help. The TV commercial <laughs> usually has two frames of the actual show. No, you want to really see the show. It could be a, a nice introduction, as you did for the <laughs> for um, for the project uh, you presented. So there is TV introduction because TV. Help. But this is what is important: is really to help the uh, the committee to understand to understand well uh, what is the show and how it is it organized. Um, uh, the purpose is important, but the reality is, of course, the most important. We need to understand how physically and how uh, intellectually and how emotionally uh, the the show or the attraction is working. So, and there is so many categories. So you have seen that even in the recipients here, there is shows, there is attractions, there is uh, more technical aspects which are really uh, uh, celebrated by the awards. So there is no frontier and um, in, in, in that. I mean, the committee has no idea uh, before to see the difference, the 150 uh, uh, files and, uh, and, uh, and candidates. So we have no idea of what the awards will uh, list will be. So uh, our work is really to be totally open and to make a very open uh, range of uh, recipients. So. But we need, because of this diversity, we need to understand each of them. And, and th this is why the, the kind of standard presentation 
uh, with uh, TV um, introduction, with uh, interview of the kids, so saying, oh yes, it was wonderful, etc. Doesn't help really the uh, our understanding. It's better to have the plans, to have the <laughs> to have the process, and uh, and to have and to see the result visually uh, and. Uh, uh, or with, of, of course, the explanations which are necessary for that. Sometimes we even will contact the project and say and ask them to send us more stuff, like the raw video from the. If it's a if it's a simulator ride, can you please just send us the actual media from the ride so we can see whether it is. sometimes they'll folks will do that, and sometimes they can't. I think one of the important things to understand is that, that sort of the difference between consumer advertising and a consumer mm -hmm. video, and one for your peers. Um, if you win the award, uh, sorry, we're not allowed to use the word win. Um, <laughs> if you if receive, recognized, yeah, you receive, you can put together the consumer one for the gala. But w what we, I was on the committee for 16 years or something like that, and I've long since termed out. But um, it's, remember, you're talking to people like you, and they want to know what the job was, what the challenge was how you achieved it, and what made it um, special and unique. And we also want to understand why is it connecting with the guest? What is that experience? So you went through all of this trouble to do an attraction or an experience or an exhibit, and how, where does that emotional connection come in? Which is why, to go back to Adam's point about if you can illustrate to us the guest experience, first and foremost, and then tell us how you got there, that's always the most powerful when we're reviewing everything. I, I also want, and I'm going to turn to Phil and the other past chairs and vice chairs coming up for help with this, but I also want to talk about the fact that because you, if you submitted a project this past year, and even if you were not recognized, there is still a chance that you will be recognized because we review it still and now I'm going to look to you for the time frame. <laughs> two, two, years. two more years, right? The yeah. current the current rules are any project that's nominated, well, if it's nominated at the time of its opening or in its right. first year of opening, it's avail it's eligible for two years because sometimes, frankly, sometimes projects have submitted videos that just don't communicate what the project really is, and then somebody goes to see it or they resubmit a better video, and everybody goes, "Wow, we, we really didn't understand that last time." So. We, that window is there to make sure there's a chance for every project to really get a chance to be recognized. So, and, and any project that's not automatic, that doesn't receive an award in any given year, in their first year, is automatically reviewed again the second year um, without even resubmittal. So, um, one other, uh, we're going to go to questions here in one second. Bob's got a question back there. But the one other note I want to make, there, the technical awards are adjudicated slightly different. I don't think we need to go into that now, but if anybody wants to ask us about that later, if, if, you, if an award for technical achievement has slightly different criteria and there is a technical committee that evaluates those to kind of see whether it's met the criteria for technical innovation and accomplishment. And because so, they're technical guys, it's a really precise evaluation. They come in with this little <laughs> table of charts and numbers that they figure Slide out to rule. calculate <laughs> which one is the right winner. Yeah. Okay, so let's go to questions. Bob, you had a question? Yeah. Yes, and yes, Phil. Uh, I, I thought it would be important to say, too, in addition to the focus on media that we've been talking about, there are written materials that we ask you to fill out and submit also. And that gives you the opportunity to actually highlight what differentiates your project from others in the same category. Or that makes a imp very important impression that wouldn't otherwise be illustrated or found in any of the media that you submit. So th there are several layers to your submittal that gives you the opportunity to best express the heartbeat, the intent, the story, the, the big idea, and how you deliver on it. Those things aren't generally represented in the media. but. They mean a lot to all of us as we, we review materials. They also become really important to those who create projects that don't have huge budgets or don't necessarily have a media group in their company. And, and they're not as prepared to provide the kind of media support. So I think it's important that you don't feel that 
perhaps you can't compete because you don't have the resources to really deliver a competitive submittal. That's not the case. I, I mean, we're very diligent, as my colleagues are saying, about how heartfelt we are at reviewing each and every one of these submittals. And we often find sometimes that, as they're saying, we just wish there was a couple more hints that would help us connect the dots, you know? So there's a bit, there are layers and use all of them. I also wanna to add to that, not only are we heartfelt in the review, but there are lively debates in that room. There is often very passionate viewpoints and that room is not always in agreement with each other as we're going through the 169 and trying to whittle down to the 14. So I think my fellow colleagues will attest to some of those lively debates and, yes. and, and, <laughs> and well, how and, passionate we are. Well, and they're interesting debates because there's, there's two things we seem to debate about a lot. One is the two key, key criteria, as Phil said, are innovation and excellence. And you you don't have to be both. You can be one, you can be the other, or both. So if something is not, but it helps to be both, right? And yes. and we debate that a lot. We did, Sometimes we say, is that just excellent? Is it okay if it's just excellent, even though it's similar to another project? Well, but it's really excellent, so it's worthy of consideration. We go around about this at length. And, and a project that isn't innovative, that might be a very typical application of things we've seen a dozen times before, but is just so beautifully executed, you know, gets, a gets consideration for that as well. But it's a balancing act always to see sort of what really pushes that. What What is the example of best practices and really excellence across all those different dimensions in our industry? And the other thing that we debate a lot, sorry, is, is it in our category to consider? We've had discussions about should a live theater show, a, bro a a Broadway theater show be considered? Should a should should a um, film Olympic be considered? An Olympic <laughs> opening ceremony be considered, or should that get some other kind of award? And uh, you know, I think our inclination is more and more to throw the widest net we can because it's all stuff that we do. So why wouldn't it be stuff that we consider for for consideration? So it's moved way beyond the original world of theme parks and then museums. Now it's into, as you saw today, really interesting categories like amazing museum exhibits. Right, there were hands, and I sh shot them all down. So. I can't. Now it's time there for questions. No questions about how to submit a Theo oh, award. Oh, there's, there's one oh one. good. There's there one. we go. <laughs> they just want a drink. That's what it feels. Yeah. Like. <laughs> That's coming up soon. <laughs> so I know you said you weren't going to comment on this a lot, but since there weren't a lot of other questions. What are the requirements for the technical awards? Um, we said we weren't going to comment because we, none of us can remember. It's, it's, uh, I'm going to, I'm, I'm not going to remember them accurately, but there, there are things like, um, sorry. Well, it's, it's, it's something that needs to, I know is a couple it, of them. Is it evolution or revolution is one of them. Is right. it, is it a natural progression that's built on someone else's technical developments and, and overall industry trends? Or is it something that's really innovative and breaks out of the box? That's just one category. Um, but we do want to make sure that technical awards are something that's going to benefit the entire industry. Right. That's, that's an important criteria. So for, so, for instance, the Geppetto system is amazing because, it is, because Super 78 is making that available to the industry at large for your projects. That's great. Same with Gantam Torch. Anybody can, can use that. Uh, so this is, like I said, it's, uh, the committee is, uh, are we allowed to say? Yeah, it's but the subcommittee. It's Bob Gurr and Monty Lundy. It's you know, real serious number nerds. So they come up with values for each of those things and kind of average it out and come up with their recommendations. They, they it's a pretty awesome sub, process. They don't have their own subcommittee of, of technical guys and I, gals as well. Since we're speaking about subcommittees, and I had a conversation with Roberta earlier today, I, I believe I might be in charge of the museum subcommittee coming up. So if yes, anybody, you probably are. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> So if anybody is interested on being on my subcommittee, please email me because I am always looking for new members for that subcommittee. And we often have a lot, if not in past years, we've had as many as a third of the entries to review to try to go back to the bigger field. So I would love anybody who's interested to um, 
I'm going to make that plea now <laughs> and get ready for it. Thank you, Lisa. Thanks. So, so just I, we're, I think we want to wrap up. Three here, minutes. I just want to reemphasize: there really is a very wide net, and there's a lot of different ways to have a very broad impact on the selection of the Thea Awards. A nominations can come from anywhere. Anybody in this room, or anybody you know, or your clients can nominate a project. We welcome people to participate on our subcommittees and influence the decision and recommendations through the subcommittees. And the broader those can go, and the more geographic particularly, the more that benefits the organization. And finally, the thing that the awards, uh, the, the nominating committee, keeps in mind over and above every other rule is just to seek out sex excellence. Excellent. <laughs> Well done. I'm ready for that drink now. <laughs> <laughs> to seek out excellence. And sex excellence. And, <laughs> and the rules are really designed to give everybody the flexibility to do that. So Because by, by definition, the things we do do not fit in categories. And what we attempt to do always is to do something that's out of the box and thinking forward. So we want to make sure that the awards are capable of finding and seeing that unusual and out of the box thing and to make sure that that gets recognized because that's what's going to lead our industry forward. That's what's good for all of us. Um, and on that just, note, uh, let's give them a huge round of applause for my plan B, Eve, Adam, Phil, and Lisa. Woo! Thank you so much. Woo!